everyone, it's Jennifer from stamptherapist.com and today I just want to share with you a quick and simple card. Ah, we made this one at my stamp classes this month in May 2017 and so let me just jump in and get started and show you. So the first thing we have is our, this is all my paper, but we have our card base and it is standard so it's eight and a half by eleven cut in half so five and a half by eight and a half. I like to fold it in half with the bone folder so I align it on the table, press it up against my thumbnail and match those two corners and then press nice and hard because you will get a smoother crease on the outside and inside with the bone folder. That's why I like to use that. And then at my classes I will have my customers turn their card over backwards and stamp and sign their name on the back. So we've been using I stamped this and better than email lately but both of those stamp sets are about to retire um, so I'll tell you about that in a sec so stamp it, this one says made by me just for you you can sign your name put your initials first and last name put the date whatever you like to do there the point of this is that when you make a card for someone you want them to know you made it not that you bought it in some cool specialty store because of course that's what they look like and so we we always do that to personalize our cards and that was Bermuda Bay ink and Bermuda Bay marker so then we'll set this aside and finish our card later bring this back in so that was step one then for our stamping the first thing we'll stamp are these dots here so I'm gonna bring in my foam map because this is a photopolymer stamp and if you have an uneven surface at home, like a plastic table or a card table or anything uneven or bumpy or soft like a plastic table, you want to throw in that foam mat so that you can um, have a nice surface to stamp on with photopolymer, the clear stamps. So this first layer here on our card is Daffodil Delight. It's four inches four inches by five and a fourth and then the next one that we're going to stamp on is another fourth inch smaller so it's three and three fourths by five and that's what we're going to stamp on next and that's smoky slate so we'll use smoky slate ink and these dots oh I forgot to tell you about this sorry I stamped this is retiring very sad it's while supplies last so you want to get it ASAP it might even be sold out by the time I do this video who knows or by the time you see it but um, if not hopefully you can get it because it's a great stamp for the back of those cards and then also there's some other stuff in here from the kitchen and so on so check that out now the stamp set that the dots are from is dragonfly dreams this one is still available and it's awesome so there's the dots we're going to use those as a nice sort of background backgrounds not really a side ground I guess <laughs> so I'm gonna ink up my stamp in smoky slate ink and remember when you're inking on our stamp pads they're foam they're real squishy so don't press too hard the way to think of it is that you only want to touch the stamp to the pad not the block and so I do move my stamps around so that they get ink everywhere but I don't smush them down in and then stamp it once pick it up and stamp it again a little further in That'll give you those lighter dots. Repeat, and then one more time. So that's why I have scratch paper on this table because it's, you know, I'm going off the edge. Okay, so next we are going to stamp our birthday greeting. And this one is from Big on Birthdays, another set that still will be available in June 2017 when our new catalog starts. I just want to open it up so you can see how big these images are. It is a great birthday stamp and really, really versatile. So we're going to use this one here. Wishing you a very happy birthday. So this piece of white is Whisper White, two and three fourths by three inches. And what I did when I first made the card is I just stamped the greeting on a scrap of white and cut around it to figure out the size. But now when I want to make more cards like I am right now, I know what size to make it. We are going to stamp this in 
Bermuda Bay, and I think my ink pad needs a little re-inking, so let me grab that. Okay, so I got my Bermuda Bay re-inker, and when you want to ink your pads, you just start on one end, squeeze, and spread the ink. And then go back, but it doesn't take as much as you would think. My re-inkers can last me years, depending, you know, as long as I don't do like a stamping technique with them. And then, I'm trying to show you how it looks on there. When you very first stamp with these, when you've re-inked it, you can see those lines in your image if you're not careful. But the way I avoid it is just by turning my stamp lots of different directions, which kind of mushes all the stripes together, basically. So again, I'm not pressing super hard, but just for, because I just re-inked it, I'm twisting it a lot. And then I'll stamp this on here with my foam mat. But really after one or two uses, the stripes are gone and you're good to go. So it's no big deal, super easy. So there we go, wishing you a very happy birthday, Bermuda Bay. And then, uh, by the way, the piece that we're gonna attach that to, this piece, is just a fourth inch bigger. So this was two and three fourths wide, so this will be three inches, and then three inches tall, so three and a fourth for the Bermuda Bay. So just add a fourth inch each way. And then I just have a scrap here of our Daffodil Delight cardstock. And we're going to use Petite Petals, another retiring stamp set. Super cute. All six of these flowers fit into the also retiring Petite Petals punch. So check it out. Um, while supplies last, hopefully it's not sold out yet. But you can order anything that we're going to use, that we are using in today's video that's not sold out, on my website. And I'll put a link in the video in description to my blog post where I list all the supplies for you, but you can order them directly on my website. Okay, so this is that flower. And this flower, this stamp set, comes in wood mount or clear mount. I'm gonna stamp it that way because I changed the direction so it'll fit my punch. If I just stamped another one up here, I wouldn't be able to reach it. So I put it at the edge there. And when I mounted that stamp onto the clear block, I made sure I put it so that a petal is sticking straight up just like the punch does, so that my life is a little easier. And you just align your stamped image with your punch, give it a little squeeze to hold it in place for yourself so that you can position it really well and then squeeze hard to punch it out. And they do like to fly across the room at you. You can always flip it upside down and put it straight to the table. Okay, we're ready to assemble this card. Yay. So let's add our greeting. Got some dirt stuck to my tape there. <laughs> let's add our greeting to our Bermuda Bay. I like to use Fast Fuse because it's super sticky, so you hardly have to use any. So you can use literally like uh, a fraction of the amount you would use in snail adhesive. You guys see how much I'm putting on here? And it costs the same as snail adhesive per inch, so you're saving a ton of money because you're paying the same, but you're using way less. And so that's pretty much all I use, except there are occasions where snail adhesive is more, makes more sense. Sometimes when I use designer paper, I use snail adhesive because it's so thin with this fast fuse. The moment it touches, it's stuck and I rip it if I try to move it. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to reposition your stuff a little bit. So I put two of these flat and I will pop the other one up. I'm just going to rip this, these Stampin' Dimensionals and use a portion of the edge there always use all of your pieces and the dimensionals you get 300 for four dollars and for four dollars <laughs> period so they're a great deal and when you use all those edges it's really more than 300 then I have my paper piercing tool for my rhinestones here so I leave the rhinestone on this sheet I've cut just cut these off of a bigger sheet put my finger on top and dig up under there until I can 
get the sticky to come off with the rhinestone. And now I can place it anywhere I want on my project with ease, position it, you know, exactly where I want. So that's why I use the paper piercing tool for that. The rhinestones currently while I'm making this video in May 2017 are sold out because they're just being reconfigured for the new catalog. So you can't get them today, but June 1st you can buy rhinestones again and you probably have some already anyway. So that is the card. I hope you liked it. If you like the video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. That does help me. And if you need any of the supplies, like I said, you can get those directly from me. I always have ordering specials where you can get basically a free class from me with your online order, but you have to enter the host code and all that information's on my blog. That's a for sure in 2017. We'll see if I do something different in 2018. So if you have any questions, let me know, and I hope to see you again at stamptherapist.com. Thanks.